everybody, it's John from iFlyQuad.com and today as you can see we're in a completely different location. That's because we're up at my workbench because we're going to learn today how to make one of these cheap little um, $9-12 race lap timers and it's going to be even cheaper if you already have the minimum OSD. So let's get started. So to start off we're just going to go over some of the components that we need. So the first thing that we're going to need is this little micro minimum OSD. So this is uh, pretty basic, you can find them for about $8 online. And what you're going to want to do is that you're going to want to solder this header pin on here. So it's just a little six pin header that we're going to use and you just want to solder that right on there. Um, now for a second thing, and this is going to be the most critical part, is, um, well one of the most critical parts, so this is a TOPS 168 or something along those lines. This is an IR decoder, so we're going to be using that. Another important thing is a little FTDI chip or um, yeah, FTI chip. So this just converts USB signals over to um, the serial communication that we're going to use. So just like plug it in like that. I think that's the right way. I don't know, uh, but we're going to program this in the next step. So because uh, we are going to have to load some custom firmware on this. And um, another thing that we're going to need is that we're going to need either a pre-made shield or a breadboard shield. And I will show you how to make the breadboard shield if I have some more breadboard lying around. If not, I'll just do it on the computer. But um, these are custom made, um, so I just I designed these. Uh, I designed it better than I could hold on to it, that's for sure. But I designed these, so if you guys want to do a run, just hit me up. They're pretty cheap. They're like a dollar to make per piece, so they're they're not that bad. Uh, the next thing you're gonna need is that you're gonna need one of these uh, little. Um, it's pretty much just an IR circuit, so it's just an LED hooked up to a um, resistor. So I'm using a 220 ohm. Resistor and I'm just using a basic IR LED and this board like I said before is completely custom So if you guys want to see a run just hit it up uh, I'll be happy to set up like a little online store and do a quick run of these um, Might be able to get one in before I have to move away to college, but we'll see so hopefully we can get at least one run in if you guys really want uh, Some miscellaneous things that we're gonna need we're gonna need like a uh, bind plug modified bind plug You'll see why we're gonna need that later. Uh, we're gonna need soldering iron a uh, pretty decent one with a good tip um, and some solder more specifically, some pretty nice, just thin solder. Air pliers, unless you want to get burned, and either a screwdriver or a knife. Uh, that's for if you're going to do the perf board version, and, um, or breadboard like this. Um, and if you're going to need to do that, then uh, you're going to have to either cut some traces, or you're going to need some, um, some wire like, like this. Uh, hopefully a bigger gauge than that, but... Pretty much, um, it's not that hard to make, and it's pretty much if you made a quad, you can make one of these. Alright, so I'll just get started with the necessary components here. So we're going to start off with our Micro Minim OSD, and we're going to need to start off with one of these blank chips. Um, however, I do not have any more headers. Well, I do, but I don't want to... Do I have six on here? Yes, I do. So you're just going to want to put that in there, drop some beads of solder on there like that, and then we'll come up with something that looks a little bit like this. This is our finished little shield. Well, it's not finished yet, but we should make a marker so it's going to go over the top like that and click it. But there's one piece that's missing from here, and that is going to be our TOPS, our receiver. So this is pretty easy. You're going to want to put it up. That little bump goes up there. And then you're going to just want to put it right in there and then solder it in. If you, and if you don't want to get burned, be sure to use some pliers or something. Alright, and then um, it should be a lot easier if you uh, decide to go and make some or buy it from me because um, the holes will be open. I already soldered this one up. All we got to do is just place this over here like that. Slide it right in, make sure none of those pins are touching, and then there we have our completed assembly. Um, for the first part, now for the second part, I'm just going to go over this uh, real quick. And uh, so right here we just have a little IR bulb so that just pops in the back and just solders in. Make sure that the longer lead goes towards the positive side and the shorter lead goes towards the negative side. 
then you can just clip them off with either um, just like a pair of wire shears like I have here, wire clippers. Um, on the rear here, I have a 220 ohm resistor. Um, that's all it is, it resists current. And uh, then I also have these two pin headers right here. So you can either bridge this um, with some solder. You can be like me, and then if you want to bridge them together with some servo cables later on, you can bridge them together with some servo cables. And neatly labeled on there is the positive and negative. So why did you need a bind plug? Well, if you wanted to end the string right there, you just throw it in and boom. And then personally what I use is that I use a little um, Fet Shark. Just gotta grab it off my other quad real, real quick. One of the uh, Fet Shark. Okay, so what I use is one of these little Fat Shark, um, like three cell converters, uh, is what I like to call them. And what they do is they just pump out 12 volts, so we'll just hook this up. And it does not matter what way that you plug it in, because, well, it does, because uh, one, it won't work, but it's not like a mini quad where it will blow up. Just grab a dead two cell, hopefully it'll have enough voltage to pump through. Plug it into the two cell port, and if it is correct you're going to see a little bit of light coming out of it now when it's on the racetrack you're not going to see that light but uh, because the camera doesn't have an IR filter on it uh, I can see it so pretty much uh, it's kind of cool because on your FPV race footage you will be able to see it but remember this is about a 5 volt because so it's kind of dead so when you hook it up to a because uh, I didn't want to blind you guys but when you hook it up to more of a substantial like a 3 cell or a 4 cell um, it should then give more voltage uh, with the two cell, it can't. It's not above 12 volts, so it's not giving the full power. And yeah, so that's pretty much how you make the system. Uh, I'm going to go into how to program the system next. So what you're going to want to do is first take off the IR shield, and you're going to want to move your minimum OSD over to this um, FTI programmer, and then just plug the FTI program into the computer, and we will now go to the computer to look at what we need to do in order to program it with the custom firmware.